Our next guest is an artist, actor, writer, and filmmaker. Her movie, Kajillionaire, is in select theaters now. Let's take a look. Because this is the way the big one starts. But the noise, it just keeps building and building and building. And this one's not building. The big one will be loud. I mean, if you're lucky, you'll get crushed. And then you'll you just die right then and there. Immediately. A never-ending void. Wow. So, YOLO. Please welcome to the show, Miranda July. Hello, Miranda. Hi there, Seth. I am so excited you're here. We've been trying to have you on for a while. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, we've actually met once before. I you know didn't that? think that you uh, would remember. <laughs> no, I do, I do. You were, so you were coming out of an elevator and I was going in and you turned do you remember what you said to me? Not. <laughs> you said, I love you. And then the door shut. <laughs> which, which a lot of people might have taken the wrong way, right? Like people might have thought you meant, I love your work or you're so cool. But I knew that you meant, I love you. I do. I know. So uh, can we talk about your movie, Kajillionaire? I thought it was fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a movie about like low, I would say a lower tier uh, family of con men. Is that an accurate way of describing it? Right, right. Not very good at their job. Not particularly good. And uh, you know, I know your work uh, over the years, and, and as we've established, I'm a fan of it. It's often autobiographical to some degree. Is there any of you? In this family, any of you in these characters? Do you mean, am I a low-level con artist? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I guess that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I will say in the, like, embarrassingly entitled punk youth that I had, there was sort of a culture of um, stealing. And um, I, ch I did, I stopped and I don't condone that. I remember the, the, like a turning point for me was I was, I was like a guest artist, a visiting artist. I was 23. I probably should have been in college, not being a guest artist, but I remember kind of scoping out the room as was my habit for what I could take on the way out, like maybe a box of chalk or that video projector or something. And then I caught myself and I, I suddenly realized, oh, you can either be this sort of respected artist person or you can have the box of chalk. <laughs> and I guess, yes, I made a choice there. Yeah, those were, those were your two paths. And uh, we're certainly happy with the one you, with the one you picked. Uh, I also, I've, I've read that you got this idea sort of half asleep, the idea for this film. And usually, I would say most writers would tell you the ideas they get when you're half asleep. You wake up in the morning, you realize it was not a particularly good idea. How quickly did you know that there was something here? Right, not very quickly. I, w I just want to say that for all the writers out there. It, it, I had to withhold judgment. You know, it seemed for the better part of a year, like kind of a silly idea. The, you know, these cons and what, what does this all mean? Why, why waste my life on this? And then I got to the end and read it back and it kind of punched me in the gut. And I, I, I guess at that moment, I was like, oh, maybe that is the movie. Maybe that's the ride. Like you're laughing, you're laughing, you're laughing, you're crying. And this is a film that, I mean, anxiety is a real theme of this film, not just the idea of uh, earthquake, but also, you know, financial, economic, and, you know, family anxiety. And, and it must be so strange to have it come out at a time, obviously you made it before all this happened, uh, in this hotbed of anxiety now. Yeah, I know it's so strange. That anxiety was, was really personal to me. And a lot of the themes like the, the sensitivity to, to touch and, um, and just the strangeness of, of this lead character, old Dolio is her name, played by Evan Rachel Lloyd. And and now, now suddenly those, those subtle themes are like front and center. Like those are not my weird thing. That's like the world's weird thing now. We're all old Dolio. You, I also want to uh, congratulate you on this monograph. This is a, this is a book about you. 
uh, that you had other people basically contribute. I mean, I think it's like 80 people that basically talk about you. Um, was that terrifying to turn over, sort of give the keys to you know, families and friends to tell your story? Yeah, I think I thought I would like that. You know how you secretly fear that you're a narcissist? You know, like you maybe take the narcissist test online and you're like, am I? And I found out real quick, like, actually, it turns out I'm not. Like, my, I hit my threshold immediately and just had to disassociate for most of the experience of making that book and pretend that everyone was talking about somebody else and I was just maybe working for that person, making her book for her. That must be so strange, too, because obviously people are giving you uh, materials and then you have to... I, because part of it is you take yourself out of it, right? And then you get this incredible reflection of somebody. Because I think sometimes with autobiographies, you know, you're obviously getting one person's perspective. It's so multi-layered to have a bunch of people. But at the same time, you're the gatekeeper. Was that a weird responsibility to have? I, I think I thought it would be more accurate that way. Like, I, I was actually assigned to write about myself. And everything I started to write didn't, it didn't seem true. Like, it Everything was true, but it didn't add up to the truth. You know what I mean? And so even if some of my friends or collaborators' stories are like a little off or it's like just their version, somehow collectively it's more a life. It's really wonderful. And uh, one of my favorite, before you go, I should say that uh, of the many things you've done, one of my favorite things you ever did was an interview uh, with Rihanna, I believe in the New York Times back in 2015, you know, I have long been enamored with Rihanna, but that, uh, that interview was the first time I realized uh, truly how fun uh, she was. Was that as much fun to uh, basically spend that time with her as it was to read? Yes. I mean, we know. We both. We know. We've both been drunk with Rihanna. Yeah. <laughs> Although she was drunk with you, whereas I think I was the only one who had, like, nervously <laughs> drunk in myself. <laughs> um, into, I mean, I... Yeah, it was, I mean, she's just so lovely, right? Yeah. She, I can't, I'm so jealous that you really hang, hung out with her like that. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just so sad it's over. And it's been over for like over a year. <laughs> I I'm, still, know. I'm still just like working through that it's probably not going to happen again. <laughs> I remember her assistant, like I had to do some last minute fact checking or something. And her assistant signed off saying something like, you know, you know see you around or something. And for the whole, like, next week, I was, like, ready. Like, they were going to call me <laughs> to hang out. And I was, like, telling everyone, like, I don't know. We have plenty. You know, she said, see you around. So that's, you know, it's probably in the next few days. <laughs> and then I, someone pointed out, like, that's just what people, that's, like, bye. Yeah, because that was, like, 2015. I feel like that would have, those plans would have probably firmed up by now. I mean, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know you're right. Um, uh, Miranda, it has been so lovely to have you here. Uh, the film is great. Congratulations on the book as well. And I would like to close the way we began by saying I love you. Thank you. <laughs>